Hi everybody, welcome back on the channel. Well, first of all, I want to apologize for all the people on Twitter because I said I would make this video yesterday and unfortunately I could not make it, I could not release it yesterday. So, all my apologies. Well, today we're going to talk about the dark market. Without any further ado, let's do this necessary. Okay, so on the first place, we're going to go into the dark web and actually see the major marketplaces. On the second place, we're going to have a vision at the history of the black market. On the third place, we're going to have a look at the reasons of why Monero is rising on the dark web. And to conclude on the fourth place, we're going to have an interpretation about what is going on and the long-term vision. Okay, so the first thing you will need is Tor. Once you have it, well, you will need a repository of addresses because on the dark web, basically, we do not really use the search engines uh, because the addresses of the website on the dark web, they change all the time. So instead, you need a repository of addresses, the most common or darknet live or dark fail. And also on Reddit, you have a subreddit called onions and right there you will find uh, very interesting links for um, international newspapers because all of them they have a darknet version of their website and you will find the links right there so right now let's dive into the dark web and let's actually have a look at the so-called dark web marketplaces and the question is is it true that Monero is a king of the dark web all right let's see what Let's see the truth right here. Are we going to see Monero everywhere or are we going to see Monero nowhere? Well, I'm very um, I'm, I'm very eager to know the truth about it because we say that Monero is everywhere. Let's see if Monero is a king on the dark web. All right, so the first marketplace is Monopoly. Um, Monopoly is a very huge market. I, I, I do not know anything about this, okay? but monopoly market when it comes to the ui of their platform they really see to be seem to be uh serious and once you enter this you see that they have they have some a lot of listings all right they have some listings but the ui i think is one of the best one because uh, it's very intuitive and you can see right there that monero is there so first platform monero checked and what is very surprising is that at one point they expand and this is the only marketplace where I found this but on this marketplace they say that you cannot um, they say that the wallets like cake wallet are not safe not safe to use it seems to say that since you cannot have the transaction ID and the transaction key with these following wallets they say that any exchange wallet, Coinomi wallet, Cake wallet, they say you cannot use it to directly put in their uh, website wallet because you do not have the transaction ID and the transaction key. I think this is what they mean. All right, this is absolutely beautiful. The only fungible cryptocurrency right there in front of you on the dark web. Absolutely magnific. I really like it this is the future CT okay so now we're going to go into vice CT so the reason why I wanted to test this platform is because on darknet live it says that there is no Monero on this platform so I wanted to check if it was really true and to my surprise as you can see it's coming Monero integrated I mean Monero is coming magnificent Magnificent coming soon. I like it. So you see there is Bitcoin and Monero. All right, so actually great even on the websites that are not supposed to have uh, Monero well you you find out that it is coming. All right, so Vice City checked All right, so next marketplace towards So this one uh, it seems to be a huge one. I don't know why but it feels like it so again, you have to register, then you have to enter a PIN number, all of this, you enter into your account. And well, 
as you can see you have a lot of uh, listings and a lot of uh, sellers so basically we have Bitcoin, Litecoin, Zcash and Monero alright very interesting the fact that you have Litecoin and Zcash I don't think this is very used by the people who are there and I do not think that the volume is huge um, but yeah you have this possibility if you want okay so Torres Monero checked alright so this is Hermes market so you, right here as well you have this uh, log this is very usual you know I, I see this uh, test in a lot of websites there is like a clock and you have to guess the hour uh, yeah, this test is very common on the different platforms so Hermes market let's see if there is Monero on this marketplace alright so right here there it is Monero XMR great so Hermes market checked alright so next one is Bohemia well let's see if Monero the king is on Bohemia oh well that's it Monero Bitcoin and Monero so Monero is present so it really seems that Monero is really eating the dark web and this is not just uh, you know some sentences that people say like this it will it, it, it is actually true you know everywhere we go we see Monero it is crazy okay so next one is revolution so as usual so you see XMR is right here you know I didn't this is the first time I log in but we have the XMR logo right here all right interesting platform look what it says look what it said here on this page you can deposit XMR and BTC the market administrator the market administrator suggests everyone uses XMR XMR is safer and private by default and has lower fees if you find yourself in a complicated situation XMR could could keep you out of jail all right so yeah very interesting look at this look at this we fully intend to become an XMR only market in the future for now we accept segwit Bitcoin withdrawals and deposits this is actually crazy we fully intend to become an XMR only market in the future all right we'll talk about it on the video but keep this in mind absolutely magnificent and beautiful what I see so revolution marketplace checked all right so it is actually true that Monero is rising on the darknet very aggressively we have seen Monero on every platform we have visited this is actually crazy now the question is why Monero is rising on the darknet and what is the future how to interpret this so also what is the history of the darknet so without any further ado let's answer all these questions in 2013 the largest darknet marketplace it was Silk Road and well Silk Road you know they have only 13,000 listings drug listings so it was the first one the total amount of traded transactions on Silk Road it was about 300,000 US dollars per day and when it comes to the yearly transactions it was about 100 million every year on Silk Road so at the end of 2013 the total listing on Silk Road it was 18,000 listings so as we will see it was just the beginning of the dark market and then we are going to have much larger numbers of listings in 2014 what the authorities have remarked is that the fact that they stopped Silk Road it did not uh, discourage people from starting dark place darknet marketplaces on the contrary it made a kind of publicity for people because they realized that there was a huge demand so new platforms have emerged we are talking about Pandora, Agora and Evolution combined all these platforms 
they made about 66,000 listings on 2014. Well, in 2015, Evolution took the leadership of the darknet. But Evolution did not implement what we call the multi-signature system. And because of this, they were able to make an exit scam. So we have seen that the, dark, the darknet marketplaces, they need to have the necessary technology to make sure that it is completely censorship resistant and also that it protects the users. But as we will see, every time a marketplace is lacking one of the four necessary um, elements to assure the censorship resistance and the security of the users every time it is exploited by someone. So in this case, what happened is that they did not implement the multi-signature system and they left with, with about 12 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin. Evolution had about 34,000 listings. So as you can see, there is already an evolution of the number of listings. The market is growing. And a very interesting figure about 2015 is when we compare the darknet transactions on Bitcoin from the operations of Bitcoin in what we call the white market, you know. The main company at this moment when it comes to merchant transactions on the white market, it was BitPay. And they made about 160 million US dollars um, per year of transactions. But when we compare this with uh, the darknet transactions of Bitcoin, at this moment it was about 300 million to 500 million dollars of uh, transactions. So, you know, sometimes we have this idea that the darknet is something very small compared to the white market. But in this example, we can see that in 2015, for instance, you know, there, there are some moments in history where the darknet is more than the other market. And 2015 is exactly this example, you know. So something to, to think about and to keep in mind. Because when we will see that right now Monero is becoming more and more present on the darknet, just remember this, that it is not a negligible market. It is potentially sometimes bigger than the other market. In 2016, the largest marketplace was Alphabay. And Alphabay was a game changer because it will become very huge. In 2017, it had almost 400,000 listings. It is one of the biggest, if not the biggest marketplace, darknet marketplace ever seen. We're talking about almost 400,000 listings. To compare, for instance, Silk Road, they had just about 10,000 listings. So it is very different. And in Alphabet, they made about $250 million every year of uh, transactions. So we are talking about huge markets. 2017 was a very important year for the darknet because in this year was what we call the Operation Bayonet. So this operation, we are talking about the authorities that basically took Alphabet offline. But what happened is that they forced the users to go from Alphabet into the second biggest marketplace at this moment, which was called Ensa. But what the users did not know is that the authorities had also taken the control of Ensa. And because Ensa did not implement the PGP process, then the communications between the vendors and the buyers on Ensa were not secured. And this allowed the authorities to basically spy and take information from the buyers for one month. So for one month, every user going into Ensa was actually going into a trap and the authorities took a lot of people this way. So then in 2018, it was a year of recovery and it was also a very important year for Monero because late 2017 was implemented the multi a multi-signature merge for Monero. 
because prior to that moment all the platforms that wanted to implement Monero they could not have the multi-signature system so all the platforms that started to implement Monero back in 2016 up until um, the end of 2017 they could not implement the multi-signature system but it was only when this this uh, multi-signature system was available for Monero that some marketplaces decided to go full Monero and the first one was Libertas so Libertas was a platform that really went full Monero and as I say we strongly believe that Monero is the future for all darknet purchases and the only real way to make anonymous transactions online we believe the time has come to move away from the Bitcoin and to embrace the more advanced Monero technology. So Libertas was the first darknet marketplace to go fully Monero. It is about to become the new norm. So 2018 was a year of recovery for the darknet marketplaces, but for Monero it was a year of establishment because it is the year when the multi-signature system was possible for Monero and a lot of darknet marketplaces decided then to really implement Monero and to go with both Monero and Bitcoin some of them went only for Monero and then in 2021 we had the biggest darknet marketplace White House that announced to go fully Monero and this is a new hero for the darknet because now we believe that this is going to become the norm of the darknet we're talking about darknet marketplaces with the same four fundamentals technology the Tor network a PGP system to establish secure communications between the vendors and the buyers a multi-signature system to make sure that the platforms cannot make exit scam and Monero as a cryptocurrency because they need a private fungible cryptocurrency and this is why they are fully going to Monero and Bitcoin is leaving the darknet when Alphabay has announced that they are going to list Monero we have seen that the price has really started to rise so this is something we want to keep in mind um, because um, it means that the more there will be money adoption on the darknet the more it will have a buying pressure on the market and I think that on the long term it will really drive a sustainable de demand from Neo and it will have a positive impact for the price of Monero. so just keep this in mind okay so now let's have a vision about the long term so the darknet has evolved tremendously it is now much more resilient yeah, I think that right now we have entered an era for the darknet because we are now in an era of multi marketplaces. Um, there is not really one leader on the market, but there are a lot of marketplaces that have high level of technology and high level of standards. All right, and this is a very key moment for the darknet history because up until now every year you had one leader of the marketplace of the marketplaces it means that the authorities that had one potential target and point of failure for the world market and this is exactly what happened in 2017 but since that date the market has evolved in a very different way and now even if white house was the major market what we have seen is that almost immediately we had a very lot we have a lot of, of platforms that were already here to meet the demand so the fall of White House uh, marketplace did not have a huge impact on the darknet because the ecosystem is really different from the previous years very interesting fact is that the sellers are cross-platform they are platform agnostic because we find that the biggest sellers on the marketplaces 
they actually operate on several different marketplaces they are not in just one marketplace so basically if one marketplace stops they are already selling on the other marketplaces so you see the sellers they are marketplace agnostic they do not depend on one marketplace the biggest sellers so if the authorities stop one marketplace or ban one marketplace the sellers they are already on several platforms so this is a huge change compared to the previous years because before as we have seen there was only one marketplace that was leading the market every year the second point of why the darknet is now much more resilient is because there are several websites there are excuse me there are several darknet marketplace as we have seen and now, now if, if the authority is trying to ban one marketplace, marketplace there are already several other marketplaces that are ready to meet the demand also when they stopped alpha bay all the traffic they were able to control it and to push it into ensa marketplace where they already had put a trap okay so what are the reasons why monero is actually rising on the darknet well the first reason is the demand from the vendors and the buyers staff members staff members at Alpha Bay and Oasis say that customers and vendors have simply demanded the Monero option. We have received a lot of requests about it. We have studied the cryptocurrency and we have decided to implement it, said an Oasis staff member. This is what we do when users, both customers and vendors, suggest that we implement or change features. We love to hear back from everyone. So as you see, the first reason why the darknet marketplaces are implementing Monero is because there is a demand from the vendors and the customers. Now, let's look deeper into this. Because as Rolf van Wegberg says in a Monero Talk interview, basically he underlines the fact that actually it is more the vendors that demand for Monero and the buyers when they do have the option between Bitcoin and Monero the buyers they have the tendency to keep going for Bitcoin and this is very interesting because the current situation of the darknet I think is that it is the vendors and the marketplaces that truly want to impose Monero on the market and the buyers they are not very um they just take the the easiest option okay they just take the easiest option and right now the easiest option when it comes to liquidity and ease of access is definitely bitcoin and this is the reason why currently the users the buyers they prefer bitcoin and in the marketplace it is the buyers that that really orientate the direction of the whole ecosystem and it is not the vendors so right now i truly believe that we have not yet seen the full potential of the demand of monero on the darknet because again a lot of marketplaces are still between bitcoin and monero and the fact that the buyers prefer using bitcoin it means that the demand for Monero, the pressures of buying for Monero, is definitely not as high as it will be in the future when all marketplaces will be only Monero. So something to, to, to know and to keep in mind. So this is the first reason why we see a rise of Monero on the darknet is because there is a huge demand from the vendors and the marketplaces and to some extent from some buyers because it really depends you know if you go on the darknet to just buy uh let's say 50 dollars of uh, weed or drugs i know you do not really you know you, you do not really care about privacy you know because the amount is not very high so what you put at stake when it comes to your personal freedom is not very high but if you buy something very expensive 
and potentially very dangerous with a lot of potential sanctions when it comes to the law um, at this moment you truly want maybe something like Monero which is extremely private so when it comes to the buyers I think that it really depends on the nature of what they are buying and since most people they just buy small amounts and they just want easy access of the currency this is what they are going right now for Bitcoin but the pressure which is extremely huge from the vendors and the marketplaces will definitely change the market and it will it is already becoming money only so so now what we are expecting is that when the market is going to become money only then the buyers on these marketplaces they will be forced to buy money in order to buy in these marketplaces yeah and and this is at this moment that we will see a true buying pressure from the darknet on Monero. All right, so the second reason why there is a surge of Monero on the darknet is because we have seen the limitations of Bitcoin mixing services. Well, let's take for this the example of someone called Mikael Mitchell. So basically, they have used blockchain analysis to de anonymize his transactions because he was using a Bitcoin mixing service called Bitcoin Fog. But the FBI was able to de anonymize all its transactions and to trace it back to him. And the consequence was very huge for him. So basically what he was doing, he was he was implementing a phishing scam on the exchanges and he was able actually to create um, fake websites. He made exactly the same website in different onion addresses. And then when the user came into his, his website, he would um, take their passwords. So basically when then the users will go on the real platform and enter and send money, he would connect on the platforms with the credentials and then he would take the cryptocurrency in the wallet of the account on these platforms. This is what he was doing. And basically then he would send the funds to a mixer service and then to local Bitcoin and then to his personal account. And the FBI was able to de-anonymize the transactions he made on the Bitcoin service and then to trace it back to the local Bitcoin and then to trace it back to his personal account. So this is what is happening. The Bitcoin mixing services are not private enough for the dark web. And he is an example of that I let all the links in the description so that you can see it even further. And even more uh, interesting is that this same Bitcoin uh, mixer service that we have talked about. So basically, it says that the creator of this Bitcoin mixing service, Roman Stalingov, basically he was arrested by the IRS for money laundering. The amount of Bitcoin we are talking about is about 1.2 million Bitcoins that transacted through his services. And um, he is basically in jail because of that. So it is not, it wasn't very clear up until very recently whether or not this operation of Bitcoin mixing services were legal or not legal. But it seems that we are going towards non-legal because the founder of the Beacon Fog uh, Beacon Mixing Service he was sentenced to jail. Okay, so the last reason why there is a rise of Monero in the dark net is because it is extremely dangerous for a platform to deal with Bitcoin. All right, the single Beacon transaction, one Beacon transaction has basically failed an entire marketplace, darknet marketplace. This is how dangerous it is to deal with Bitcoin for a darknet marketplace. Well, this is the answer marketplace. We have talked about this one, all right? So right here is information. One single Bitcoin transaction has revealed the location of a darknet market server. This is crazy. Let me repeat this. 
a single Bitcoin transaction revealed the location of a darknet servers. Okay, so this is the answer marketplace. We have talked about it. It was, um, you know, 2017. Yeah, 2017 during the huge crackdown on Alpha Bay. There was a second platform. We have talked about it. It is answer platform, right? The marketplace. In the second platform, the authorities, they had taken control of this platform and they were able to spy on people for one month. But the reason why they were able to take control of this platform in the first place is because of one Bitcoin transaction. Absolutely crazy. Could you imagine a platform that could be seized just for one Monero transaction? I mean, no, because it is completely private and fungible. So, and so was a major darknet market taken down in July 2017. The details of how this market was compromised was not known. And this is one of the first articles to disclose details. Apparently, a single beacon transaction was the break law enforcement needed to find the location of the servers. Okay, so now let's go into the interpretation what is going on on the dark web first of all for my feeling of this analysis that monero is not an altcoin anymore i've been digging into the dark web uh, finding information incredible information about this cryptocurrency and my feeling that we are talking about a test net for for the future actually the dark net is nothing but a test net for the future it is where you basically put the technology in extreme conditions where the most important for the counterpart is freedom and it is privacy because a lot is at stake we're talking about people for some extent that actually put their life at stake so it is what how important this is you know so at this moment we have seen that bitcoin is not up to the level and as we have said um this sentence from Ayek, you know, he says that good money drives out bad money. And this is exactly what we have seen on the darknet. Monero is completely replacing Bitcoin. As we have seen, the new era is coming. And 2021, when basically White House, they decided to go full Monero. This is a new era for the darknet because the vendors and the marketplaces they will really pressure the market into going full Monero. So right now we are still in a moment of transition when we see that there is both Bitcoin and Monero, but the definitely the trajectory of the history is to go fully Monero. So we are talking about a potential moment in history, two or three years from now, that we will have completely 100% Monero on the darknet. So Monero, will have effectively replaced Bitcoin on the darknet. This is absolutely huge. And now we are talking about the darknet, but the same thing could happen in the real world, AKA the white market. Why? Because the world right now is in a moment of radicalization and it is in this kind of moments that you have extreme conditions, exactly the same way you have extreme conditions on the darknet. And the reason in all these extreme conditions, we're talking about ultra taxation, unrealized capital gains, hyperinflation, all of these, all right, will put pressure on people and to force them to actually own resilient assets. Well, the properties and the resiliency of the assets will really be tested at the maximum level. And Bitcoin in harsh conditions, it doesn't make it for a lot of people. This is exactly why the people on the darknet, they do not want Bitcoin anymore and they just want to use Monero. Okay, so now as Andreas Antonopoulos says, the darknet and the white market there is not really a difference. The only difference between the darknet and the white market 
is that one is legal and the other one is illegal but this is the only difference and the fact that Monero has been able to replace Bitcoin on the darknet and now is going to fully be the king of the darknet for me what it means is that Monero can potentially replace Bitcoin on any market because technically speaking between the darknet and the white market there is almost no difference the only difference is not technical it's just pure language all right so now i think that we have a truly importance to start a new momentum of money adoption for everybody not just on the darknet i think that the darknet is a very first important step but now we have the possibility to actually give Monero to the world you know basically for the same reasons why people have decided to use Monero instead of Bitcoin on the darknet I truly believe that we have this possibility to um, overcome Bitcoin possibility to give Bitcoin to the people much further than just the darknet it was a very interesting moment for history but now we have this possibility to give Monero back to much more people and this is what it is about right now, I believe. This is why also we are going to start um, a new series of video, which is called the Monero Shop series, where we will actually see how we can implement Monero in real life applications. It was a proposition from um, Crypto Grumpy. And basically the idea is to show how to build a web store from, from scratch and to integrate Monero into this and have different videos about how to accept Monero as you know a regular website you know so this is the whole idea to make it very uh, easy and to have a look at different kind of integration of Monero and yeah so potentially Monero will replace Bitcoin much further than just on the dark net. All right, so that was my analysis of the dark net. I hope you liked it, and remember, the storm is coming.